Hey guys, my name's Al Watmo, and I lead the product management team at Autodesk responsible for manufacturing Infusion 360. What I wanted to do today was record a series of short videos covering the fundamental concepts I believe anyone who's using Fusion 360 as their CAD CAM solution needs to know. There are a few unique aspects of using a parametric tool like Fusion 360 that are extremely important to understand if you're truly going to harness its power. So in this first video, I'm going to give you an overview of how we connect design and manufacturing together. In subsequent videos, we'll walk through how we leverage Fusion 360 to capture the intent behind our decisions. When we understand why we're making the decisions that we're making, and we can capture those decisions within a parametric tool, we truly begin to leverage its power. While I will be demonstrating the product in these videos, they're not intended to be step-by-step -step guides. There's plenty of great content out there for that. My goal is to give you an understanding of the core concepts you need to understand. So with that, let's jump into it. So what's the difference between CAD and CAM? CAD, or computer-aided design, is really the process of creating 3D geometry. CAM, or computer-aided manufacturing, is about authoring the instructions for digital manufacturing tools like CNC machines and 3D printers to follow as they manufacture your models. So the CAD system creates the 3D models, and these are consumed by engineering drawings, renderings, or even CAM systems. And the CAM system takes these 3D models and generates instructions for the digital manufacturing tools. These instructions are fed to the machines via G-code and fed to the operators via setup sheets. Fusion, as I mentioned, is both a CAD system and a CAM system. Okay, at this point, I'd like to start showing you around Fusion 360. The bulk of my screen is currently filled with a 3D model of a pump designed by my colleague, Rob Cohey. Using my mouse, I can rotate it around to show you multiple sides of this 3D model. I'd also like to draw your attention to the view cube in the top right corner, as this is a consistent mechanism in all Autodesk products for manipulating a 3D view. If you're coming from another CAD CAM system, you may have instantly described this as an assembly. Maybe you noticed the list of components and even picked up on the link indicating these components came from other documents. However, the truth is, Fusion 360 doesn't have an assembly-specific document. It's simply a Fusion document used for the purposes of assembling components together. And what do I mean by that? I'll use the tabs across the top of the application to switch to another Fusion document. In this case, I have a document of my end cap component. Both of these documents have the ability to create models of components and assemble components together. I've simply chosen to create my end cap in one document and assemble it together in another Fusion document. If I switch to yet a third Fusion document, you can see how I've fixtured my component to begin the machining process. What we'll see later is all of these documents are linked together. Making a change to one will update all the others. Now, before we start looking at the manufacturing workspace where we'll create our tool paths, I'd like to point out some key areas of the design or CAD workspace. Along the left-hand side, you can see the browser. This lists all of the components, sketches, and bodies that make up this Fusion document. Along the bottom, you can see a timeline of how the Fusion document was created. Think of this as the recipe. Those animations you saw earlier were simply me playing the timeline of a component being created. So while the timeline is the recipe, the browser is the result. Let's go ahead and play the timeline for this document. As we play the timeline, you can see the components being referenced in, placed into position, sketches being created, and features cutting pockets into my vice jaws to hold my part in place when I machine it. Now let's go take a look at our CAM tools. We'll do this using the workspace switcher in the top left corner. Whoa, the list here is much longer than just design and manufacturing. Well, it's not the focus of this video, I will just say, with Fusion, we're not simply fusing together CAD and CAM. 
You can see we have other workspaces that provide tool sets for generative design, where we use advanced algorithms to generate designs based on engineering requirements. It's honestly insane to see how it can even optimize designs for specific manufacturing processes. The rendering workspace allows you to create photorealistic renderings of your models, and drawings provide tools for creating production-ready engineering drawings. With all that said, let's get to the good stuff and jump into manufacturing. Where the browser and the design space represented components in the document, the browser and the CAM workspace represents the operations we create to manufacture components. Each specific operation drives a tool along a path, known as a tool path, to remove material in the case of machining, and in the case of 3D printing or additive, we add material along that path, again to produce a finished part. By multi-selecting these operations, I can even simulate them. And we get a preview of what's going to happen when I run this on my machine. Now, these operations have been grouped into setups. Setups are what create NC programs. If I double click an NC program, I can see the operations that are being sent to my machine and I can see the settings that format my code for my specific machine. In the CAM world, this is referred to as a post processor. You can think of G-code as a language, but each machine has its own dialect. This is where we refine how we communicate properly with the machine and add some machine specific parameters like centering the part in front of the door or adding line numbers in front of our G-codes. Also hanging off the NC program, I can see setup sheets used to communicate to an operator setting the machine up what tools to enter and where to place the part on the machine before executing the G-code. Okay. At the beginning of the video, I told you I'd demonstrate the value of having these tools connected. Let's end this video by going all the way back to our initial component and making a change. We can see that change reflected within the component. And when we switch to the assembly, we can update and pull that change in and again have it reflected. Switching to the manufacturing document updates the component here. And regenerating the tool paths creates a new set of instructions for manufacturing this component. So let's recap. We now know what CAD and CAM are. CAD, or Computer Aided Design, is used to create 3D geometry. CAM, or Computer Aided Manufacturing, is used to create the digital instructions for CNC machines and 3D printers. Fusion 360 fuses these and other tools together into a single connected experience. I think it goes without saying, but if you found this video to be a help, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who you think would also benefit from this content. It's going to inspire me to do more content like it. Most of all, in the comments below, please share how we can continue to help you learn on your journey to master manufacturing in Fusion 360. What do you like about Fusion 360? And honestly, what can we do to make Fusion 360 better for you? Thanks for watching.